on one of y'all, bro. This not gonna be it for us. It can't be. We too special, man. We too special. Let's get it, y'all. Let's get it done, baby. Lean in your brother. Run us on three. One, two, three. Run. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. you dude you're absurd bro <laughs> thank you bro. for how young you are you like you seem like a 10-year vet when you're out there like when we're watching you with your teammates too the way you interact with your team and your coaches between plays after plays the way you celebrate and talk to everybody why 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 are you why is it just so easy for you and what do you think this team has that has made it such a special run this year yeah, I appreciate that, man. Uh, I really feel like I was kind of groomed into this, uh, going to Ohio State, winning a lot of big games, losing a lot of big games, um, having to be the leader on the team. Every, when everything hits the fan, everybody's looking at you. And at that point, it was like 108,000 in our stadium. Um, but now it's a little less, but it, it's still a lot of pressure. Uh, but I, I, like I said before, I think pressure is a privilege. And I think God put a, a, a special spirit in my heart to be able to calm the storm. and rally guys around and uh, I also have a, a, a great uh, teammates to do it with me, you know, so um, it's been a blessing this year working with a great group of guys um, and we, we've shocked the world and we just want to keep going. We want to keep proving ourselves right. You made this one play. Mm -hmm. God, you're fading away. Okay. Throw away. Oh, it must have slipped out of his hand. Bummer. Not getting out of bounds. Colts pick. This is going to be awesome. Here we go. Pick six yeah. coming right yeah. towards us. Yep. Right back towards where <laughs> we were. But instead, it was a catch, and I think you did it on purpose. Fox, in the middle of that run, you took a test, the S2 test, mm -hmm. and they say you were just dumb. Yeah. You remember that? Yes, sir. Guy's Stupid. dumb. Yep. Can't dumb, do it. Can't I assume that test is never going to be used again because Probably. all you've done is just come in with a football IQ level that nobody historically has, by the way. You have, like, historic records for being the smartest <laughs> rookie quarterback <laughs> Take care to ever play. CJ oh, yeah. back out there and some pieces back. Of course. Yeah. Um, when CJ's on the field, it's, the team, it's, it's just different. Um, He's a hell of a player, um, a great person. Um, if you ever, you know, people ever get out, get get a chance to ever really sit down and talk with him, he's a great kid. Was raised the right way, mm -hmm. and um, very knowledgeable about football. So um, I enjoy, it, man, to see him out on that field. So has he exceeded <laughs> your expectations as a rookie? Did you expect this much? No, I, I I I can't say I did uh, because. And when rookies come in, it's tough, like because you know everybody's good, and the way he stood up and performed um, as a rookie, man, it's uh, it's been great to watch. One rep. Uh, I mean, can I have all 28 reps of the 28 interceptions I threw my rookie year? <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean C.J. Stroud, the way he's played yeah. this year, I mean, like, like. The respect I have for his season, I can't describe it enough because of what my rookie season was like. I mean, I always say, well, it's tough being a rookie in the NFL. CJ Stroud's like, it doesn't look that tough. It was extremely <laughs> tough for me. So uh, I'm going to expand that. I want, you know, look, I want at least, you know, uh, 16 of those back. Okay. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, certainly you got to throw some interceptions as a rookie, but sure, 28, it's just way too many now. And unfortunately, even with the 17 weeks, Kevin, it's never going to get broken because <laughs> when the rookies struggle now, the coaches take them out. They sit yeah. them down. I'm like, no, you've got to be in there all 17 weeks to break <laughs> this record faster. And I have to go through my reads even faster. And that's not necessarily what you have to do. You just have to respect the speed of the defense and understand, hey, I just can't make that throw. I made that throw a ton and I can't make that throw, right? And that's how you prevent those turnovers. And I think CJ has figured that out so much quicker than I did. It took me a whole season. I kind of figured it out my second year, right? Yeah. But I had to go through that rookie year. So there's that fine line between respecting the speed of the defense, but maybe not over-respecting it where – it gets you into some bad habits. A lot different. Um, I mean, CJ is one of, I mean, not just the, the best rookie quarterback, but he's the best, one of the best quarterbacks in the whole entire NFL. So um, he presents a lot of challenges for us, but um, I think we're up for the challenge. Of course, you know, reference to personnel would be a challenge. You know, CJ um, is the type of player that he is, which is an awesome player. Um, and then they have the you know, real good backs, real good lines. So it'll be a challenge for us overall, but um, it'll be a little bit more 
understood because we have more footage on him. The fact that he's a rookie quarterback gives yeah, no. any edge at all. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't think it's like an uh, edge thing where you, know, you come in, he's a rookie quarterback, and you know, he may struggle with this, he may struggle with that. I think he's he's um, you know mature enough to be able to, and he's seen enough football to be able to um, um, you know execute in the way that he should. I, I think I don't think him being a rookie quarterback is going to affect uh, his play at all. Do you guys see him? Does he face everything defensively now? Well, I mean he's he's faced similar defenses. You know the Jets runs you know a similar front to us and similar concepts. So he's faced similar defenses, and I, and I think he's. Uh, seeing the film of us to be able to uh, execute the way. for his age, you know, his, you know, his first year, you know, being able to you know, make his progressions and get it out on time. You know? A lot of qu quarterbacks, when you know, it's their first year, they, they you know, stick to you know, one, two, and they have to get it out, but can't really read the field. And uh, I think he's done a great job of being able to, to sort of game down to this point. Eat up. Did you see what the Texans did offensively today? I, like, I, I don't understand. C.J. Stroud looks like a goddamn 10-year vet. Looks like a damn 10-year vet. Nothing seemed nope. to rattle him. Nothing seemed nope. to rattle him at all. Then I'm, I'm C.J. Stroud made a play on the um on the screen pass, and of course I tweeted out, ladies and gentlemen, C.J. Stroud take a bow, and everybody up they up in arm. Oh man, it was just a screen pass. I mean he didn't do he didn't do the work. All he did was just throw a screen. Hello. Have you seen the body of work and what C.J. Stroud has put together throughout the entirety of this season? He throws a beautiful ball. Throughout the entirety of the season. I understand it was just a screen pass. He came back the very next drive. Did you see the touch ball to the oh, tight yeah. end? Sure. Did you see the touch where he dropped it in the bucket yep. to the tight end? Then I had, to, I had to tweet back again. For all you haters that had something to say, it was just a screen pass. But what was that? A handoff. Easily. Easily. He, young, young, young brother, man, has changed to then change the franchise around in a matter of months. In a matter of months, he's completely changed that franchise franchise around and given the fans in the city of Houston hope. Let's get From to now. the guy who probably had the most impressive performance, and it wasn't because of the stat sheet. It was C.J. Stroud. C.J. Stroud had the most impressive performance because he showed grit and determination. But what C.J. Stroud did was he never panicked. He showed you franchise quarterback mindset. He understands that as a young QB, when you're highly drafted, you're not always going to go to the best teams. None of these guys did. So there's going to be some tough sledding. So I just want to say for CJ Stroud, I think he won over his teammates because he stayed tough and he stood tall in the pocket and he never looked for a way out. That to me is a franchise quarterback and the Houston Texans are very lucky to have a guy like CJ Stroud. Stroud is the best rookie you've evaluated six, seven games in the season. I'm throwing that deep, baby. If I'm trying to teach my kids how to throw a football, I would point to CJ Stroud and be like, just look at this dude. It's so pretty. Am I surprised that he's having as much success as he is as a rookie on Houston, yes, very surprised. But I felt like he was the guy that was going right after the um, combine. We was texting each other and stuff like that, and he was just telling me like, man, he like how well he talked to me after the combine. He was just like, well, I like how you run routes, like how you, you know play football. You know, he said he been watching me and stuff like that. And then I told him vice versa, and you no, know, I appreciated him and stuff like that. <clears throat> and then like he, mm, I think it was like after he got drafted, you know, I saw him congrats. Then I was like, tell him, come get me. <laughs> I told him, tell him, come get me and stuff like that. He And then he was like, I got you, trust me. And then um, the next day, I think um, he called me, he FaceTimed me out of nowhere. Like I texted him. Yeah, I texted him and he FaceTimed me. And then he was like, man, I told him I want you. Yada, yada, yada. This, that, and the third. So I was like, okay, it can, it can happen. And then, you know. You got anything you'd like to ask Tom before we go, CJ? Yeah, man. I would just ask, like, when you started playing well, what was the process of, um, your mentality, like, how did you stay on a straight and narrow? Um, even like, you know, you have people reaching out and uh, family and like the, just the world around you seems like it's spinning and you're just trying to stay focused and stay in a, on a straight and narrow. I think the important thing I really want you to realize, this is now your job. Everyone, when they come to the game, it's a vacation. It's fun for them. Oh, my God, we're here to watch, you know, CJ play for you. You know, you don't bust in on your on your friends at their job. And, you know, when they're trying to be really focused and do what they need to do. Hey, can I interrupt you? Hey, I know there's a really busy time for you, but let's go do something fun. Or, you know, you don't need to be the source of people's entertainment 
over the course of the season. This is, it's not college anymore. The earlier you get it in your mind that this is a profession and you're a professional and everyone is counting on you and you can't have a bad day like Coach Day taught you. And you're in an organization where D'Amico is a great coach. Um, Nick Cesario, you know, I've got a long relationship with. You know, all these guys are counting on you. It's not – it's fun. The process of winning is fun. You know, the memories you're going to have from a great season are fun. The games are fun. The practice, the camaraderie is fun. You know, trying to create fun for everybody else outside of that isn't your responsibility. You're not camp counselor for everyone's fun activities. You're out there – trying to perform, trying to dig deep for your teammates. And that requires intense focus for a long period of time. There's discipline that starts the beginning in August all the way through the end of the season.